You know, there's been a lot of talk recently about the Constitution. So to learn more, we're going to go to our CMS News political correspondent, Ms. Kraft, live in 1787. I am coming to you live from Philadelphia, where at this very moment, 55 delegates from 12 of our 13 states are arriving for what is being called the Great Convention. Now, the delegates are meeting in this building behind me, the Pennsylvania State House, but more commonly known as Independence Hall. Although the purpose of this meeting is to revise or improve our Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, which many people believe gives the national government too little power. If the United States ever hopes to survive as one united country, this may need to be revisited. Now, although the convention is not open to the public, we are going to see if we can just take a little peek inside and see what is happening. Welcome to Philly, friends. Philadelphia, the home of brotherly love. I'm Ben Franklin. I'm so glad you could join us. I know it's a wee bit early this morning, but you know what they say, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And now I would like to introduce to you the man we've been waiting for, the general from Virginia, George Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Delegates, thank you. Thank you. It is my humble honor to be here today, and I appreciate the fact that you have elected me to lead this convention. Um, as you know, many of you, I see many familiar faces around here and some new ones as well. Um, some of you were here with me back in 1775 for the Great Continental Congress um, who elected me to be the commander of the Continental Army. Some of you were here, although I was not, declaring independence from Great Britain in this very room back in 1776. Since that time, we have had some great successes and some struggles. We've had good times and bad. Now we are faced with a great challenge. As you know, our national government, this union of states, has come upon some hard times lately. One of my former soldiers, Daniel Shays, led a rebellion against the government over taxes up in Massachusetts. And when the national government was asked to assist, we were too weak and were unable to do anything. Now, we are here, invited by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and others to revise or to fix our Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, because we're going to need a stronger national government if we are going to survive as a country. So as you recall, our, currently our Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, has created a very weak national government that gives most of the power to the states. There's no president. There's, we must have unanimous decision for the Congress to make any decisions. Some think it's unfair that every state has the same power in the Congress. Not to mention, we have no real army, navy. We can't raise taxes. We can't collect taxes at all. We can only rely on donations from or voluntary payments from the states and that doesn't seem to be working out so well. So I'd just like to take a second to recognize a few of the delegates here today. Um, of course you've always already met our friend Ben Franklin um, and in a moment you'll meet Mr. Madison, my friend Jemmy, uh, but uh, one person who has played a big role in getting us here and he's been important to me for quite some time. He's someone who's ha nice to have on my side. Some call him my right-hand man. Um, you know what, Mr. Hamilton, why don't you introduce yourself? Alexander Hamilton, 
My name is Alexander Hamilton. There's a million things I haven't done. Just you wait. Just you wait. Why, thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Now, Mr. Madison. Yes, my friend Jemmy from Virginia. First of all, thank you for all of the work you've done in preparation of this convention, um, all the note-taking you have done. And I, it's my understanding you've come up with sort of a rough draft that we can use. And you're, you're suggesting a whole new constitution that we, we revise, we, instead of revising the Articles of Confederation, we simply start fresh, start new, whole new constitution. Would you like to explain, Mr. Madison? I've been studying other countries' governments and looking at constitutions and Mr. Washington and Dr. Franklin. I just think that our constitution is too weak. The Articles of Confederation is going to doom us to fail. It just does not have enough power in a central government. So my proposal is that we scrap the Articles of Confederation and create a new federal government, a new constitution giving the United States of America more power in the federal government. So, Mr. Madison, I guess you're saying we're not going to be needing this. The question is, what type of government shall we be? We want a monarchy? No! no although, goodness no. some have suggested that I become king. But I agree with you, Dr. Franklin. No, I want no part of a monarchy. We fought too long and hard to end monarchy. No, we said we wanted a country where all men are created equal and they are endowed with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you, thank you, Thomas Jefferson. Yes, unfortunately, Mr. Jefferson is not with us here today. Um, he is over in France, of course. He is unable, we're unable to hear his wisdom on this matter. Um, although he did send many books and letters to Mr. Madison to help advise him about this. Um, and he is in agreement. So I think that, do we have all of the delegates here? Uh, are they all, have they all arrived by now? Uh, we seem to be missing delegates from our lovely state of Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island, the small state. I, I heard some rumors that that Rhode Island may not attend because they are afraid that we are going to create too strong a national government and perhaps the interests of the large states will overwhelm the interests of the small states. I think we need to find a balance if that's possible. Yes, yes. So we've decided so far that we are going to create what kind of country not a monarchy. A republic. A republic. Ah, a republic, a representative democracy where we elect, the people will elect their leaders to make decisions for them and to lead them. Yes. And they, of course that will require a legislature a yes. that makes laws. Similar to parliament, but not parliament. Well, it is getting dark and we've been here all day. I believe that it is time for us to adjourn for the night. Do you agree, Dr. Franklin? I already said the early to bed, early to rise thing. Have a restful evening, and I will see you again when we resume. This session is now adjourned. Thank you. outside of Independence Hall, but things are very different today. It appears that there are very few delegates inside of the building, and I have heard that the convention has moved online, whatever that might be, due to a pandemic called yellow fever? Wait, wait, over there I see Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Let's go have a talk with him to see if maybe he can give us a little more information. Dr. Franklin, excuse me, Dr. Franklin, could you please explain to us what is going on? Why are there so few, few people here? What is the yellow fever pandemic and what does online mean? 
The day that I harnessed the electricity through the kite and the string, I realized so much more could be done. And thank goodness, because now you don't have to be here to see what's happening there. And we can call this, well, you know, online, like the line of the kite with the key hanging from it, online. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to try once again to get a peek inside of the Constitutional Convention. Come along. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, it appears as though the only two people inside of Independence Hall are George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. The other delegates appear to be joining them virtually. Good morning, Dr. Franklin. So is this working now? It is really amazing what you've done, Dr. Franklin. I'm not sure how you did it, but you took those windows, the portraits, your bifocals, the kite strings, the key, the electricity, and somehow I'm able to see the delegates, wherever they are, anywhere, on the, anywhere in the country. It's amazing. So, for those of you who have just joined us, I know a few of the delegates missed the other day and then we got caught up in the pandemic shutdown that forced us to close and now we are virtual? Dr. Dr. Franklin has, has constructed this thing, so hopefully this is working. So only Dr. Franklin and I are here in the hall and of course we are socially distanced. Yes. Um, so I guess we should get right down to business. As you recall, we have decided, we decided last time to, rather than revising the Articles of Confederation, to draft a whole new constitution, to create a whole new national government. So the first order of business now is to decide what this is going to look like. And I think we all are in agreement that it is important that we have a stronger legislature, a national legislature, the group that makes laws, not for one colony, but for the whole, all 13 states. I'm sorry, states. Still getting used to that term. So, what, what, what should this new national legislature look like? What is the plan? Um, well, our friend, my friend James Madison, Jemmy, who has done all the preparation, is here with us virtually, although he is actually at his home in Virginia at Mount Pelier. Mr. Madison, I hope you're enjoying your time back home in Virginia. I sometimes wish I were back at Mount Vernon. Would you like to share with us your Virginia plan? Uh, Mr. Madison, are you, are you there? Did we reach you? Yes! Oh my goodness! This is amazing! How did you come up with this, Dr. Franklin? This way of communicating is so much easier. I'm back here at my home, Montpelier in Orange, Virginia, and it is so great to be able to be in the comfort of my home and work on this new constitution. And I've got some plans for you. Well, um, Mr. Madison, I sometimes wish I were back in Virginia at my home at Mount Vernon, but I understand that You've come up with a plan that you're calling the Virginia plan? Yes, you know, Virginia is the state with the largest population. And so if we were to have equal representation in Congress, that wouldn't really work out well for Virginia. So the Virginia plan proposes proportional representation in Congress. What that means is if a state has more people, they would have more say in the government in the legislature. So for example, if Virginia has more people, they would have more votes in the Congress. This would allow for proportional representation and allow for representation to be more fairly spread out. So the Virginia plan is proportional representation in the legislative branch, not equal representation. Oh, thank you, Mr. Madison. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again, Dr. Franklin. I have to compliment you on this remarkable, another remarkable invention of yours. It's a 
portrait that moves and allows us to put words onto and, and move them about. It's quite amazing, Dr. Franklin. So I'm, we're going to try to use this to explain what the first issue here is. How many representatives or votes, in other words, how much power should each state have in Congress? Congress being the national legislature, the group that makes laws. So I think this is a helpful painting that might make it more clear why this is such an important issue. So we want to be a representative democracy. We want the people to be represented in our government. Now, in this portrait, these people, the blue people and the red people, represent, represent thousands of people. And their views that they wish to support, whether the blue or the red. Let's say that the blue would like a blue flag and the red would like a red flag. Now, if we were to just follow the will of the people, clearly many more people prefer the red to the blue. However, as you are all aware, we are a union of states. We have, our population is divided up into 13 states, and we're not divided equally. We have some very large states, such as Virginia, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and we have some small states like Delaware and Rhode Island. Now, we're not talking about the size of their land. We're talking about their population, of course. Now, as we said, here, Clearly, the red outweighs the blue. However, when we divide it up into states, it might look something like this. And under the current system, the Articles of Confederation, and by the way, the way we are operating at this convention today, we are divided into states, and each state has an equal voice. Each state has the same amount of power, whether it be one vote or two votes. Here we are going with one vote, but let's look now. The blue, well, the red has one, two, three, four. They would have four, four states. Let me fix my cuffs, sorry. Um, four, four states would vote for the red, whereas one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, would vote for the blue. So the blue would carry the day, even though the will of the people was the red. Yes, this is quite a difficult decision. I understand it's quite contentious, this issue of representation. I understand some of the large states are definitely not going to be happy if we have equal representation from the states. But on the other hand, some of the small states are feeling they're going to be overwhelmed if we give too much power to the large states. Um, we're going to hear a couple of different views here. First of all, we're going to go to Nathaniel Gorham. Uh, Mr. Gorham, who I believe is in Boston, up in Massachusetts, one of our large population states. Mr. Gorham? Oh, Mr. Gorham. Thank you, General Washington. I'd like to point out the gross unfairness of any plan that gives all states equal representation and power in Congress. This makes no sense at all. How is it fair that my home state of Massachusetts should have the same number of votes in Congress as a tiny little state like Rhode Island, even though we have more than six times the population? Six times the population. That's crazier than King George himself. I guarantee you that the people of my state will never accept this Constitution unless power in the legislation is shared proportionately according to each state's population. Well, thank you, Mr. Gorham. Um, and by the way, I understand you might be looking to locate, to relocate to um, the western part of New York State. Well, my, one of my former friends, one of my former soldiers, uh, Captain, Captain John Sullivan, he uh, visited that area, as you may know, during the war, 
and uh, you'll have to write to him. And he he mentioned a lake, uh, Canandaigua. You might look to purchase some land in that area, perhaps. Now to Mr. Patterson, who I believe is in Trenton, New Jersey. Mr. Patterson, one of the smaller population states. Um, I hear, understand you disagree with Mr. Gorham. With all due respect to Mr. Gorham and Mr. Madison, I have to say that the good people of New Jersey will never have to say, have anything good to say or agree with such preposterous proposals as proportional with this type of representation. If in the Congress is based on the state's population, then the large states like Virginia, like Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania are going to have to control, have complete control of the whole government, while the small states will have none. Remember, there are 13 states in the Union, not just three large states. I shall suggest a simple, sensible solution to the silliness set forth by the so-called Virginia Plan. I propose that each state should be represented equally in Congress, just as we are now, so that no state or states can dominate the federal government like the big three. Why, thank you, Mr. Patterson. Well, this seems like quite a dilemma. On one hand, we have the smaller population states who really want equal representation. And on the other hand, we have the large population states who believe that they, their people are being cheated if they have an equal voice to the smaller states. This is a conundrum, and, and I understand that some of the small states will walk out of this convention and walk out of the country if they do not get their way, and some of the larger states feel equally as strong. What are we to do? Well, we seem to be at a deadlock here. Maybe our friend Roger Sherman has something to share. What's that, Mr. Sherman? Roger Sherman, where are you? Oh, new, you're in Connecticut. Can you hear us? Okay, let's let's hear what what Mr. Sherman has to say. Roger, how are you? Doing great, Georgie, Benny. How are you? You can see beautiful New Haven behind me. Gorgeous day here in Connecticut. Great day for a compromise. Yes. Yeah, so you want to propose a compromise? I understand. I do. We've got to work together. We need unity. And I hear both sides. So the large states and small states can't come to an agreement about representation in Congress. Betty, Any ideas? Yes, that's why I'm calling it the Great Compromise. The small states that want their voice heard, let's create a house for them. Let's call it the Senate. And those that want their voice to be heard because of large population, the House of Representatives. Two house system. And both will have to agree to pass laws? Of course, both will have to agree to pass laws. Why, well, that sounds like quite a great compromise, Mr. Chairman. Well, it's all about working together. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds like quite a compromise. So let me make sure we have this right. What you're saying is that we're going to divide Congress, the legislature, into two houses. We'll have the Senate, where all states will be equal. Let's say two senators per state. Whether they're a large state or a small state, everyone is going to have two senators, two votes. On the other hand, the House of the People, the House of Representatives, or as we all call it, the House. Their representation is going to be based on population. The larger your population, the more votes you get in the Congress. Now, to pass a law, both the House and the Senate would have to approve it to make a law. Roger Sherman, this sounds like a very good compromise. In fact, I predict that hundreds of years from now, school children may learn about your name and learn about your great compromise. All in favor of the great compromise, say aye. aye. aye.
Hi. 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 Oh, that's a good one. Hi. Hi. All right, stop. The motion passes. Huzzah. 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 Huzz